Welcome back. And we are taking our monthly look at the gold and silver price charts with one of our technical analysis guests. Um, this week we've got, or this month, we've got Gareth Soloway from In The Money Stocks. I'm Dave Russell of Goldcore TV, helping you make sense of the precious metals markets so you can make better investment decisions. Gareth, we've had an interesting few weeks in the gold market and in the silver market. A bit of volatility coming back into the price and a bit of a sell-off. What are the start? What are the charts suggesting? Yeah, so thank you for having me. As always, it's great to talk to you and kind of go over the metal charts. And and basically, what we have here, we have, and I'm going to show my chart is we have a recent pullback in gold after a very big move to the upside, right? So finally, we got that bigger move. Gold had been kind of tracking down since really early 2022, all the way to the end of 2022. Then you got that big pullback in the dollar. And again, I think what's so interesting to note here is that if you look at the lows here on gold, and then we flip over to the DXY chart, you can see the highs right here coincide with the lows on gold. So as soon yeah. as the dollar started to crack and started to fall back down, we saw gold starting to rally. Now look at right here, right? We basically had a one, two, three bar surge on gold or on, on the dollar. And then if we flip back to the gold chart, what's gold done? It started to pull back. So as soon as the dollar gets a bid, a beautiful pullback in gold comes in. Now, for me on the short term, this was a big rally. Everyone should expect pullbacks. That's very normal for markets. The technical level where I'm looking to accumulate again is right down here. So essentially what you have here is a pullback that started. This is now your zone right around 1800 would be the level where you want to start accumulating for your next bull run. And again, keep in mind that the midterm, so this is short-term analysis, what mm -hmm. I'm doing right now, you know, buy at 1800, look for the next move up kind of, kind of retrace trade right now. But what you want to keep in mind is that this is the short-term. So short-term tells us maybe a little bit more downside before we want to buy again. Notice the support level right here and here. If we go to a bigger time frame on gold, let's flip to the weekly chart. The weekly remains unbelievably bullish. And what I mean by that is you have this strong move up here from 2018 to 2020. And then you have this channel. Let me bring up my channel trend line drawing tools. You basically have this here. All of this is what we refer to as a larger bullish in spirit of flag pattern. So again, right. start move up. This is all consolidation, which is digestion of this move up. What this tells us is that over the midterm, this is what's going to happen, or at least the most highest probability scenario is that you're going to have a breakout. So I do think by the end of 2023, we do see new all-time highs above this double top here at around 2073 on gold, and we should head north of 2100 20, and even higher by the end of the year per this chart. And that, and that chart there supports the other chart and basically says short term, there's a good chance that we have further pullback in that. But overall, the trend is higher. Uh, just right. sticking with gold for a moment. Um, have you got a monthly chart there by any chance? We just take a quick look at that because I think we saw uh, did we did we see a, a breakout on the monthly or did it just literally touch that line? Yeah. So it looks like at least for the monthly. Right. So the monthly you kind of had these pierces right here, right? Mm -hmm. So so if we draw that line across from the monthly high in 2011, you can see we briefly got above it and then came back in. We tagged the line, came back in. We briefly pierced again. But what's interesting here, especially this candle right here, and again, I can zoom in even more. So this one right here is known as a topping tail, right? Yeah. So when you get price to pop and then it creates a long tail and closes in the lower portions, that's a bearish signal. And then if you look at what happened, look at this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven red candles in a row. But interestingly enough, where did it take us? Right back to this low end of this trend line here. And that's where the next leg up takes us. And look at where we're back to. We just tagged this down sloping trend line. So essentially channels are pin pinball machines, right? The ball mm. keeps bouncing here and then it hits here and then here, here and here. But generally sideways or down sloping channels, they eventually break to the upside. Nice. Uh, let's take across to silver now. Let's uh, have a look at what's going on there. Yeah. So silver is a little bit trickier, right? And again, mm. the key with me on silver is that there's this industrial component. So overall, I think you still look at it like, okay, silver is a chart where 
overall, the printing of money, the inflation, the fear is going to have a general positive impact on it. But one of the interesting things with silver is what you could see here is it wasn't a sideways or downsloping trend line. Recently, we've had an upsloping trend line. Upsloping channels here, trend line upsloping, trend line upsloping, they generally break in the near term to the downside. And we did see that here with silver. The positive on silver is that we just retraced into this $22 level, which is technical support. So 22 was my first level where I said, hey, I might start nibbling just a little bit. Um, I wouldn't accumulate all of it there, all of a full position. Instead, I'd leave some room where if it does come into these levels around 2120 to 2080, there's a 40 cent range there, that would be your next level. And again, just keep in mind is that you have the same aspects that gold has in that you have the fear trade, the inflation trade, and the, the dollar weakening trade. All of those factors play for gold. They also play for silver, but you have the industrial component. So the, the essentially, if the economy, right, if the economy really did weaken significantly, that might take a little bit of the upside pressure out of silver um, over the mid to long term. Overall, if you ask me, do I want to be long silver down here? Yes because it's still a commodity. You're still going to have the impacts of inflation on it. But overall, just be a little bit more careful with your silver entries. Awesome. So basically, for, for, for both of them, short term, we're seeing a little bit of weakness. We could see a little bit more of a retracement on both gold and silver. Uh, silver, you think, could, or sorry, gold, you think could be kind of 1800 could be the good support level in or in that. Silver, you think if we get below this uh, 22 level, the next level then on support is going to be what? Uh, 2120 to 2080. So there's a 40 cent range right here where that would be major support. So I think, again, nibbling here, this is a lot of support here. It's a very good level. But just understand that there's, there's a decent chance it has a little bit more downside. Just like if you look at gold, right? So if we go back to gold, gold still has a little bit of downside to go, in my opinion, before it really hits major support. So you figure if gold comes here, silver could go down to that next level as well. So again, silver is at support, but you could expect it to see just a little bit more weakness down here okay so 1800 ish on gold 21 uh, 21 20 uh, area kind of on silver good places to start accumulating for another move higher uh, yes keep, keep an keep an eye keep an eye on that you say the industrial aspect of silver that might might weigh on it um long term you're bullish on both yeah, absolutely. That's a great synopsis. And I think, again, mid to long term bullish on both near term, maybe a little bit more weakness before they become buys again. 